Welcome back, ladies. I'm so incredibly excited to be able to introduce you to my guest today, Ahuva Hirsch. Hirschkoff. I knew I was going to do that. I knew it. I've been it's practicing all morning. <laughs> Ahuba Hirschkopf is a mom of three, six and under. That in itself is three full-time jobs. Uh, she is a dietitian and a burnout coach for overstretched professional women. And I know an awful lot of those. Most of them are listeners to this podcast. So although we are ladies that are kicking ass, sometimes we're trying to kick ass at too many things at the same time. So this is going to be a really... Yes, this is going to be a really awesome conversation. It kind of goes back to that whole saying of like, you you can't ride uh, two horses with one ass type of yeah. thing. Like you can't be kicking more asses than your own. And I think a lot of us try to do that. So yeah. we don't want to do that anymore. But through Ahuva's coaching practice, she offers a signature program that we're going to talk about, the Unapologetic Living Code. And then she does corporate speaking opportunities where she's also able to talk to women about like chilling out on this ridiculous idea that you have to be everything to everybody and be perfect mm -hmm. and be doing excellent and excelling all the time because we are humans too. Um, and how important it is to make sure that you're paying attention to your diet, lifestyle, and mental well being so that you don't enter these burnout phases. So, Ahuba, I'm so thankful that you're here with us today. So why don't you go ahead and tell the listeners a little bit more about yourself, if you'd like to, and how you landed in this position that you are in now with your coaching that's business. All, yeah, that's always the question. Um, how did a dietitian end up as a burnout coach as well? Yes. Yeah, so I am a body autonomy dietitian, I like to call myself, which really just means I believe that with it, whichever, you know, whatever client I'm working with, it's your body, your choice. We go with what your goals are. I don't have any sort of, you know, specific goals I try and tell everyone has to achieve. It's really helping clients, whether it is in my nutrition coaching or in the burnout coaching, understand their reasons for their goals and really love the process of getting there. Um, so really, I ended up in this space by opening up a nutrition practice, a private nutrition practice at the end of 2019. I also decided at the beginning of 2020 that, you know, my kids were three and a half. My, I have, I have uh, twins and they were about three and a half. And I was like, you know, feels like it might be a good time to, to add a third in. It'll be great. I'm going to have, you know, a year where it'll probably take us to get pregnant. I'll probably have around, you know, another nine months to until I have this baby. Two years, get a business, like go in. I found out that I was pregnant two days after COVID lockdowns happened. And my kids came home <laughs> and, you know, I was like, this is fine. It's fine. I'm, I'm a high achiever. I can make this work. It'll be totally great. And just decided I was going to try and barrel through and try and push as hard as possible to still build this business in, you know, nine months, went back to work six days after my son was born and, you know, for very obvious reasons, ended up burning myself out as I was talking to women you know, as clients and just hearing how burned out everyone was feeling, how overstretched so many women were feeling while also feeling like they just weren't measuring up, right? It wasn't like they felt like, you know what, I'm really pushing hard. You know, I'm starting a business or I'm working or I'm doing something. I'm really pushing hard, but I feel like I'm making mm -hmm. progress. Right? I feel like I'm doing good work. I feel like I'm great. It was, I feel like I'm burning the candle at all ends. And I don't feel like I'm going anywhere or accomplishing anything that I want to. And uh -huh. it's sort of at a certain point clicked, like it can't just be me feeling like this and every client that I'm talking to and my friend down the street and that other mom that I saw at the park, right? There has to be a specific reason why women really are socialized into burnout. And so really took a step back and started understanding and learning on my own, doing a lot of you know, my own research um, and learning on, you know, hustle culture and how it really shows up and specifically how diet culture actually actually socializes women into hustle culture and leads to burnout in so many women across the board. And so, you know, now my practice is a combination of um, supporting women in stepping out of diet culture and hustle culture so they can avoid the burnout that really seems to plague so many of us. Oh, 
I think it's very interesting when you talk to about like the COVID situation and you think I can do this. I can do this. I remember thinking the same thing. Like I was like, I'll just run another office at, at my office building. I'll set up a classroom. I'm still going to be able to do work. I'm still going to be able to do all these things. No, I think that no. was like the beginning, like. I always took on more than I could do in the first place. But then you're yeah. like, now I have two kids I'm trying to educate. My son at the time was in first grade. So he's pretty yeah. much just like spinning shit. He's in his chair all day long, you know, like he's not paying attention to anything. So it it was, I think that, do you see that women have had a hard time coming back down from being that teacher like, especially if you were an entrepreneurial woman, right? You own a business, you're trying to run a company, you're doing that, you're trying to do all this stuff with the kids for school, you're trying to take care of your family, you're trying to make everybody still happy. Do you see that that it's, there's still a lot of residual effects from that? Like women are having a hard time now, like, when they say like, I just wish it would go back to normal, like, everybody's still so high strung. I feel like it's like a lasting impression. Do you see that too? 100%. And I think that it, it speaks to like a couple of things that sometimes hold women back. Right. And I, I'm a runner. I love running. And there used to be a point where sometimes I would specifically not want to do a further run. Like, you know, we were in, I'm in Canada, we're in kilometers. So I guess like, like, you know, instead of if I normally ran four miles and I felt like one day I could push myself to like six miles, I wouldn't want to do it because I know that in my head, that would be my new benchmark. I'd have to hit six miles every single time, right? And that's what we think can, like consistency is. And so sometimes I think that there was a lot of people who help and a lot of women who still are sort of holding them back from, you know, trying something new or even like starting that business during COVID because they're like, I know that I'm going to set that new benchmark. And mm -hmm. so many of us did that. We're like, well, there was a point in my life where I was handling, um, you know, like, homeschooling and having multiple kids at home and running a business and having a job and being this and doing that and doing this. And I was handling it all. So I must be able to do it now. Right. Yeah. And I think that it speaks to also what our definition of handling it is. Like, I think that we mm -hmm. all spent like three years in a bit of a fight or flight response, right. A bit of like, just sure. put your head down and just do it. Right. Yeah. Are people, you know, are we checking in that we're emotionally um, like handling it super well, that we're not like having more anxiety, that we're not, you know, your digestion isn't all of a sudden going like off the rails because you're so nervous all the time. Like you haven't pooped in five days, right? Like, is that your definition of handling it? And for a lot of women, it is right. Getting mm -hmm. the, getting the stuff done is not the only definition of handling it. If you're feeling exhausted, if you're feeling like you're burning out, if you're feeling like you're yelling at everybody and losing your mind all the time because, you know, you're just so overstretched and that's your definition of like, but I was handling it. I can do all of those things. That's actually where, you know, I often come in and I'm like, we need to change the definition of like doing it all that you're managing it because that to me is not long-term sustainable handling it. That's like, you're going to handle this for five years and then you're going to like run away from your family and your job and never come back. Yeah, for sure. And I think uh, all of us have probably felt that at some point. I think so. Saying that, what do you think is the maybe the boundary line or the differentiation point where you're just like overstressed and you're entering, like you're in burnout. I think so many of us that are high achievers or we have a lot of shit going on all the time are kind of thinking, well, I'm just stressed right now. Like that's yeah. something I'm trying to completely remove from my vocabulary because I hear my like seven-year-old and, and 10-year-old saying, I'm really stressed out right now. And I'm like, mm -hmm. from what? Well, because I got to clean my room, <laughs> you know, like something. It's like anytime they see um, things that they have to, you know, go out outside of their comfort zone, they're associating the word stress because I think we used it so much for so yeah. long. Like, how do you differentiate with women that you're just like, you're overstretched and you're a little stressed out and shit, you're hitting burnout. Like we got to do something now. Yeah. So number one, I always think this is an interesting question because I always, I get asked it all the time. And I really think that it actually speaks more to how the, you know, the working mom hustle culture and that hustle culture that women find themselves specifically in actually impacts women differently. Because 
you know, when your kid is sick, right? If you think you need to take them to the doctor, you don't sit there and think like, oh, how sick are they really? Like, should I take them? Should I not? Should I, should I give them child? Should I not? Should I make them feel better? Should I not? Like, you don't tell your kids, like, you're not sick enough yet. Come back to me in 10 minutes if you're really taking a turn for the worse and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll help you out. Right. But very often I get this question of like, so I'm exhausted all the time or I'm, you know, I'm feeling like I'm getting, being overstretched. I'm just like, I'm not feeling like I'm functioning at my best. I'm just feeling like, and this is, you know, going on for like three months, six months, but I don't know if I'm in burnout yet. Right. And it feels like we need to almost get to a certain point before we can justify support. Right. So I don't exclusively, yeah. you know, work with clients who are actively burning out, who are like on the couch with their like, you know, nervous system, like totally shot, feeling like I just can't move for six weeks. Really, you know, the most important question is, do you feel like if your life were to stay this way, you would feel happy in 30 years, right? Because the reality Mm. is sometimes we tell people, you know, it's just a phase, right? Like this is just, this is just a phase. Your kids are just a phase. And the reality is like, again, I have three kids who are six and under my two and a half year old did not sleep this entire week. Thank God he slept last night. So I got to sleep through the night. (laughs) fantastic, right? That is a phase, like that will end. There are elements of having young kids, having a business that is, you know, I'm in like year, what, three of starting my business. My business is still young, right? Like there's there's phases of things that mm-hmm. are going to change. And also the way that we build things is the way that we live them. So if right yeah. now you're like, I'm feeling like I'm just not at home in my life. I'm just feeling like I'm just totally overstretched. I'm feeling like I don't even have a clear direction. Like I'm pulling in so many directions. I don't even know where I'm going. That's also probably how you're going to feel in 10 years, right? Like this phase of parenthood, this phase of business, this phase of life might shift, but the principles we put in place, the, you know, sort of fundamentals of like what our routines look like are still going to be there in 10 years. So if that's where you are, you know, that's likely the time to start getting support to be like, okay, how do I actually refocus? right? How do I get yeah. really clear on what my values are in the life that I want to live so that that's the one we can make sure that we're building? Absolutely. So when women are kind of, I call this like the superwoman syndrome, because it truly is like you feel like you have to be badass at all of these things. Like mm-hmm. there's this thing with high achieving women that is is unparalleled with like to really explain it. It's like, I have to be a really great, I have to be the best mom. I have to be the best at my job. My company has to be the best that's out there. I have to look my best. I have to do all these things. How, when you're kind of in that, it's a cycle. It's a vicious cycle (laughs) of Mm -hmm. trying to do all of those things. What is the, what impact do you think that, and have you seen with your clients on having that need and desire to strive to be the best and the impact on their health, given the fact that you have the background of a dietitian. I know for me, it's like, grab some crackers, run out the door, grab a something, run out the door. Like my diet sucks. I know that a hundred percent. Cause it's like run and grab, go something. Then at the end of the day, I'm like, I seriously probably had like 500 calories all day long today. Like how come I can't drop some weight? How come I feel like shit all day? You know, like, yeah, obviously I have we're clients doing who are like in the at 11 PM and they're like, what? Oh, or so what? I'm eating so much. I'm like, did you eat anything today? And they're like, um, a goldfish cracker that my son dropped on the floor and I didn't feel like throwing in the garbage. And I was like, that about thumbs up. Yes. <laughs> yes. So it's like, like for me, this has been a very difficult thing of like, I know I need to do this because again, I would love to strive in this area. But yeah, I think it's one of the, like, to me, it's very intimidating because there is so much shit out there about this bad diet and this thing. And I'm supposed to be doing this. And like, my husband's on this big, like I, I'm on uh, intermittent fasting and I don't eat for like most of the day. And I'm like, I I don't understand what I'm supposed to do here. So it's kind of like one of those things we put on the back. Yeah. What I help women do um, is really answer the question why for most of the things that I do, because the truth is that burnout and and your health work, you know, cyclically, right? So Mm -hmm. for sure, when we're in burnout, right, when you're releasing more cortisol, when your hormones are like all sort of out of whack, 
that can either lead to like much larger appetite or, you know, I have some clients who are like, I have no appetite for like months. I'm so constipated, honestly, Mm -hmm. because you're so tightly wound up that you literally can't relax the muscles necessary Mm -hmm. to have a bowel movement, right? There's lots of different ways when you're not sleeping. Suddenly then again, you can be reaching for like that 3 p.m. chocolate bar because you just need something to, to, you know, like pick to have that pick me up. And the, the thing that is the most honestly infuriating um, and the part that I enjoy helping my clients with the most is the part where then it just leads to like further beating yourself up, right? Is yeah. I have clients who are like, it makes perfect sense to me when we actually look at why you're in the you're in the pantry at 11 p.m. looking for any snack you can get your hands on, but you're so busy guilting yourself over here for doing that. When if we can actually look at the question like why is this happening, it makes 100% perfect sense that that's happening. And the reality is the same things that lead to the hustle culture, right? The same things that lead to burnout, the people pleasing, the perfectionism, the, the societal pressure are the same way that diet culture actually keep people perpetually stuck, right? So you mentioned the fad diets. The promise Mm -hmm. of a fad diet is the same thing as every promise in hustle culture, which is just you as a woman can possibly know the right thing for yourself. You're obviously not like, you're you're not in tune with yourself enough to know that. (laughs) Here's this very clear way to do things right, whether it's intermittent fasting, keto, Atkins. I mean, like we've seen everything under the sun, right? Cottage cheese and cabbage, Mm -hmm. whatever, all the things. Here's this right way. All of your happiness, success, and worth is on the other side of this very right way to live. And if you can't seem to do that, that's a you problem, right? That's not Mm -hmm. a problem with the diet. That's a you problem. You got to figure that out. You're just unworthy until you can figure it out, right? Yeah. In the same way that hustle culture will tell you like the million dollar business, the promotion, the house in the Hamptons, the whatever it is, right? All of your happiness is on the other side of this one little goal. All you got to do is do this Mm -hmm. thing. If you can't do that, like that's a you problem, right? And so we see the same things that are burning us out in both of these areas and they mirror each other so perfectly. Um, And so when we really do take that step back and start understanding like why certain things are happening, number one, we can stop that condemnation like that just, it's just my fault. I can't figure it out. That keeps women stuck. And then we can actually problem solve, right? And make it super, you know, reasonable and realistic so that it's not like I heard uh, a talk by a nutritionist the other, like, I think it was like a a week or so ago, who was like, you should spend 45 minutes like cooking your lunch so that you can stimulate your like, you know, like your gastrointestinal system to know that food was coming. And I was like, 45 minutes in the middle of the day. Are you kidding me? Like who spends 45 minutes? Are you serious right now? (laughs) Like, this is not like, it's not happening. For anybody, or at least anybody that I'm working with. I don't know if you have 45 minutes in the middle of the day to be cooking lunch, but like I sure as hell do not have 45 minutes in the middle of the day to be cooking lunch, right? And so really spend that much time with all three meals. (laughs) Right. Right. Um, and so really what I, you know, what I help people with is start understanding how their health goals, their professional goals, and their personal goals typically are all following like the same pattern. And there's certain core beliefs and there are certain core principles and, you know, limit, like you know, limiting factors that are really impacting all of those areas, right? And they all sort of work together in that cycle of when you're already burnt out, you're going to put less effort into your meals because who has the energy for that? And then when you're not eating as well, that's going to impact how you show up. And it sort of creates these vicious cycles that we need to start interrupting. Yes, absolutely. Do you find that there is one thing more than other that really keeps women from focusing on their nutritional needs and their, you know, physical well-being when they're like this? Is it like something specific, like they just don't have enough time or they just don't understand how to do it? Or they're still trying to, like my big thing that I tell myself, which I know is bullshit, is if I cook all these healthy foods, then my kids aren't going to want to eat because they don't like lettuce, you know, like it's just stupid stuff like that. Yeah. So that's the one is really, it's the, the sense of people pleasing and the sense of, um, you know, sort of needing to put everyone else's needs first that will always Mm -hmm. come and bite women in, in the ass. I know that I'm assuming mm-hmm. that I'm allowed to say ass on this podcast because it's oh, yes. ass. Okay. 
just just figured out to clarify. Um, but it's really it's the people pleasing and the fact that we're conditioned to put our needs last, right? And so yeah. that's you know often what stops so many women from focusing on their own health, whether you know whether that's like their their physical health, their nutrition, their meals, their sleep they're working out, they're even taking five minutes to themselves to just like support their own mental health, right? All of those things were conditioned to put our needs last. Um, we're literally socialized to show up for everyone else around us and not ourselves. And so the minute mm-hmm. that women start doing that, like imagine if you ate a meal before your kids ate a meal, right? Like you fed yourself before you fed your kids. You'd probably feel like absolute garbage because you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to make sure that everybody else is fed. And then at the last, like then you're able to feed yourself, right? And so that's the operating system that we've been given. And that's the way that we've been focusing on certain things. And we've really been thinking about things as women were socialized to really see things as a zero sum game, right? If I give to myself, I'm taking away from my kids. And what woman out there is going to say that they're going to take away from their children? Are you a monster? Yeah. Right? And <laughs> yeah. so very often women don't, whether they're burnt out or whether they're not, I mean, that's often what leads them to burnout is this um, lack of confidence and these feelings of guilt when they put themselves, not even first, but when they put themselves on the list. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think too, we have to have the conversation around taking time away from your kids, taking mm-hmm. shit away from your kids temporarily, maybe a little uncomfortable so that you've got something in the future that you're building that is going to better support them in the long game. You know, yeah. we talk a lot on this podcast about making, you know, the ripple effect of our choices and our decisions and what that does for our kids that aren't listening to what we tell them to do. They're watching what we do and then mirroring that in their own lives. And I love having the conversation, like you just said, that we've been conditioned to do this. We've been conditioned to do this. I think our era of of women very much still saw our moms going to work more so than our own mothers did. You know, we saw them trying to have a working life outside of the home and still take care of kids, you know, at home, which like for my mom too, was still like very much. So she was like the main caregiver in the house. Yeah. I think it's very interesting with like our generation and what our kids are watching now too is There's moms out there that are really excelling. They're leading businesses. They're starting their own businesses. They're doing a lot of the entrepreneurial things and still being able to take care of themselves and being able to show that as a role model to our kids. My daughter looks at it like, of course I would start a business. Why would I not start a business? You know, Mm -hmm. and for many, many people that don't have that modeled for them, they're like, that would be impossible for me to start a business. I just have to be this. So I think it is so incredibly important that we continue to have the conversation around, we have to show them things instead of telling them, like, don't put yourself last, stand up for yourself, do this, do this, when we're not doing it for ourselves. Is that something that you talk about during your your coaching things with the women as well? Yeah, because the reality is like, you're absolutely right, right? And very often, like we put ourselves last so that we can put our kids first all the time. And we forget yeah. sometimes that we're raising adults, we're not raising kids, right? Like your your kids are kids oh, yeah. for a much shorter period of their life than their adults. And so if they see you killing yourself and martyring yourself and like putting yourself last to, you know, especially obviously sons too, like I have I have two sons, but especially for the Mm -hmm. women who are raising daughters, if they see you doing that, so what have you taught them? That they get to go to the the front of the line. They get to put themselves first. They're important and worthy humans until they have kids and then it ends, right? When I'm going to be a mother, I I had my first child at 26, right? So Mm -hmm. assuming that I live to be like, I don't know, 85, I'm going to be a mother for a heck of a lot longer then I was ever not a mother, right? So why would I tell my children or model to my children, you're only worthy of thinking of your own needs, thinking of like how you need support for a for a 25% of your life, right? Sure. Whereas if we show them, again, 
that doesn't mean I think like I just, you know, I always want to caveat because I hear, I feel like whenever p- women hear this, they're like, so I'm just supposed to put my spell first and forget about my kids. Like, no, nobody is no. saying that, right? We're not saying like, just ditch them forever, but it is being able to, in small ways, show them that you can prioritize yourself also, right? You're allowed yeah. to take time also. it's It can be something even as simple as you know, sitting down at dinner and like my kids asking for something, you know, like seconds of something and me being able to say like, yeah, like I'm also hungry. I'm just going to take it, like take a few bites and then I'm happy to get you yours yours also, right? I'm happy to refill your plate, but I'm not going to refill your plate six times before I've had a chance to sit down, right? It doesn't have to be massive. Like I'm going to take a three week vacation. It can be small little ways that we continue modeling to them that you're important too. Sure. Absolutely. And I think it sends a very good message to our kids too, that it's not, you know, mom's not here to just wait on you. You know, she's a human too. She's a person in her own self. And it's important that we talk about our goals, our things that we're working on, and even incorporate Mm -hmm. them in some of those things a little bit so that they can start to learn and identify with those things. I don't know yeah. how you do that with your business, but like I talked about, I talked to my kids about my company all the time. Like they understand these things. They understand mom has to go to work. And when I incorporate them in the business and in the things that I'm working on, I have a whole hell of a lot less mom guilt of actually leaving them behind because they actually understand why mom is doing this in the first mm-hmm. place. So I think a lot of it is around conversations. Is that something that that you talk to your clients about as far as like incorporating the kids to make sure that, you know, they're learning those awesome practices right alongside with you? Yeah. I mean, there's like, there's definitely, you know, it's something like my kids love the word um, exercise because they see me, you know, going for runs or exercising or they'll ask to even like, you know, lift weights with me sometimes. Like we have little like tiny little pretend dumbbells that they can, that they can exercise with me alongside, right? Whether it's business or whether it's, um, you know, cooking or even like having conversations with, you know, like what are we having for dinner tonight? Like the example that you were giving of like, if I make the food that I, that I like, then my kids aren't going to eat it. Right. Like even being able to have conversations and involve them in like, Hey, we're part of a family or Hey, I'm a person too. And I occasionally would, you know, obviously in different child friendly words, but would like to sometimes make the foods that I like too. Right. And so being able to definitely have these conversations of, of your goals, of the things that you enjoy, of being them totally being able to understand part of why you do what you do and how that supports you as a person is those are so those are so important to be able to reinforce to them so that they can have that modeled as they grow. Sure. And if we keep running ourselves into the ground and stop putting ourselves last, you're not going to be there and show up to be this amazing mom that they need anyways. They don't need a perfect mom. They need a happy, healthy mom that is that wants to spend time with them, wants to have energy with them and be able to still be happy because they see you chasing your dreams. You know, yeah. it's very interesting. I just read this study and they were talking about they asked the like thousands of kids from like age four up to age 16, like what's the most important thing that you like about your parents? It was not like what, what they give me, um, where we live, how big our house is. The overwhelming response was that they're happy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so fascinating because I think back like, course we're adults now but I think back and I was like would I have even thought about that (laughs) but I often wonder if it's because they see us so unhappy all the time that they wish you know when those when those little um sections of happiness come in they're like oh I like this mom oh I like this dad you know because because they're happy and they're playing with me and they're being present with me where oftentimes we're so stuck in that hustle, hustle, hustle mode that we often, it seems like, forget that there's little people that are watching us too. Yeah, completely. And I think that they, you know, sometimes I think that we have too much confidence in our acting skills, 
right? We're like, they won't know, or they don't see, or they don't notice. And little people see everything, right? All the things. It's so funny. Um, I went last year to, you know, to my kids who are in SK's, um, like senior kindergarten's classroom for, to give donuts out for their birthday. And I left Mm -hmm. 20 minutes later and I was like, okay, so I now know like intimate details of every single parent's life from every single child in the classroom. (laughs) I could write a memoir probably in 20 minutes. (laughs) I was like, dear Lord, these teachers know everything about me. (laughs) Yeah, and they do. They really, but they really do. And they see everything, right? And so for sure, I think that even when we don't notice what our kids feel like our baseline is, if, if we're stressed, if we're always overwhelmed, that is what they learn adulthood is, right? And yeah. so for sure, more than anything, our kids do want to be able to to know that we're happy as well. Yes. Oh, yes. Well, that just kind of leads us into your program that you offer through your coaching business. Um, why don't you talk to us about what the Unapologetic Living Code is all about? Yeah, the Unapologetic Living Code is really about coaching high achieving women, right? Women who, you know, are driven but are feeling completely overstretched to mm-hmm. take a step back to be able to, as you know, as I said, number one step out of burnout and out of that hustle culture, but more so to really come home to themselves, right? So it's a combination of, you know, so many women walk around their entire lives feeling not at home in their body, but they, you know, doing all the things to try and make their body societally acceptable or to fall into, to, you know, the diet culture and all the things that we're supposed to be doing and living the lives where they're like, I'm going to run myself ragged to, uh, you know, keep up with this life, but I don't really feel at home in it. Something about this feels like it's just not me to start taking mm-hmm. that step back and start understanding really how women are conditioned into diet culture, culture and hustle culture um, through people pleasing, perfectionism, and just societal pressures so that we can really start clarifying the life that you want to live and start living that one. So, you know, th- that by that, I mean, you know, understanding like, your job, do you really hate it? Or, you know, do you really want to leave? Or is that just, you know, something that you're like spending way too much time stressing about whether or not you're doing your your job right and you're terrified of your boss? Or, you know, do you really want to lose five pounds? Or do you just, you know, you got more compliments from other people when when you were at that weight? Um, Starting to understand sort of where some of those priorities are and start being able to clarify what your goals and your vision of your life is so that we can step out of that mental load we've been handling and step out of the burnout that that's causing. Excellent. Uh, what do you think in that program with women that I know I have joined programs that were, were similar to this before, <laughs> and it's uh, like there's a severe fear of getting started. What do you think that fear really is with people and how do you help ease that? So I think that there is a lot of distrust that women have built with themselves. Number one. Mm -hmm. So again, we're again, like socially conditioned to not trust ourselves and to look at other people for answers. And so I think one of the biggest fears to people getting started is this like, am I going to be able to do it? Am I going to follow through? I don't know. I give up on so many things. Right. And I think part of the reason that that happens, right. Think about how many fad diets people probably start and then never, never, like never finish or last like a week on, um, and then don't do, or how many time hacks people have tried to put into routine or time blocking or certain like things that they're like, the experts told me that this was going to give me hours back in their day and they never did. Right. And Uh really the reason that that happens so often is that sometimes, you know, we go straight from problem to solution without actually understanding the problem, right? Because again, using the example that we gave earlier, right? The the problem is not that you're in the pantry at 11 p.m. eating snacks, right? That's not the real problem. So some people will say, you know, I'm just in the pantry at 11 p.m. Maybe I should just lock the pantry. That's the solution, right? Well, that's not going to fix the problem of you've only had 300 calories throughout the day, right? Which is the real problem. Yeah. 
And so part of what we do inside the program is we don't get caught up in what those like little tiny problems that we think that we're, that we're solving are, and then go straight to solution. I really help you understand what the actual problem that we're solving is, and then hold your hand through solving it, right? So it is taking that step back again. It's not the 11 p.m. in the pantry. It's the what's everything that's actually leading up to that, both from how we're functioning throughout the day and from, you know, some of the, again, the the people pleasing, the perfectionism, the societal pressures that wire our brains to function like that. So, you know, again, like the um, so that we can actually start making realistic solutions and so that you can mm-hmm. understand the why of how those patterns keep on showing up for you. Sure. Well, it starts with the commitment to get started, jumping in mm-hmm. and commit to start. You know, as long as you are being consistent about it, I think people forget that they're like, I'm going to be happy when I'm here. And you're like, the yeah. happiness is actually getting to that spot, you know? Consistency breeds the confidence that you need to keep showing up every single day. I find this very interesting. Okay. I was just talking to my husband about this when he's like, I'm I'm feeling I'm getting more motivated because of this, or I need to get motivated to do this. I'm like, then start. Yeah. Just start. Because the motivation doesn't come until after you start. Yeah. And then you see something and you're like, oh, I like that. I'm going to keep going. That's what motivation is. You can't get motivated to get off the couch to do something. It's a decision. It's not motivation. So it's really making a decision that I'm going to start showing up for myself. I'm going to start showing up for my kids. I'm going to start showing up for my partner for, for my own health so that I can be a better person. If you still want to, you know, have that, that time relationship with people, you're doing it so that you can be better for them. And it's not just looking at it in the context of it's just something selfish that you're doing for yourself. Yeah. And I think sometimes we underestimate, uh, you know, physics, right? Like the power of inertia, that when you get started, when you're in motion, when you've committed, when you've joined a program or you've, you know, started a new routine, like you tend to stay in motion, right? Inertia keeps you, things that are in motion, stay in motion. Things that are at rest, stay at rest, right? If we don't get started, we typically then delay it's like the, oh, I'll start tomorrow and six years have passed before you've ever gotten started, right? Whereas yes. when we start, we're more likely to stay in motion. Yes. Yep. And you don't have to, speaking to the high achievers out there, you don't have to be perfect at this either. It's a few cool. little things, you know, like uh, I, I know for me, like good, finding time to go to the gym and I'm like, mm, I could be doing this, but I'm going to go to the gym. Make a goal that you're going to be there twice this week. You know, as you can Mm -hmm. start increasing it, increase it. As long as you're going and you're starting and you're doing something, once you get there, every time I get to the gym, I feel amazing when I leave there. And then I'm like, why the hell don't you just do this all the time anyways? You know, but it's that thing that we're talking about, about start making a commitment to start and just start. And then you will build confidence. The consistency just comes from there. So I think this is an incredible conversation. Um, I think it's super important. We were talking before we started rolling this, how important it is for us as women that we talk about the, the tough stuff. We talk about the shitty situation. We talk about how, you know, we can look at ourselves in the mirror and be like, "Mm, not doing so great today. You know, stop comparing yourself to all this BS that you see that's pretty in in fantasy world on social media and connect with real women that want to see you succeed, but understand yeah. that there's struggles along the way. And we need to continue to yeah. keep talking about this stuff. It's so important what Ahuva is doing with your with her business, with being able to talk to women about I see you where you're at and not suppressing those things that really are totally kicking our ass in a bad way. So (laughs) thank you so much for calling out to all of this. Um, I know that you have prepared a downloadable guide for our listeners for that. Do you want to tell them a little bit about that? Everything will be connected in the show notes, but tell them what's inside of there. Yes, I know that a couple of the things that always burn women out or feel have them feeling super overwhelmed is lack of time and too many things on their to-do list. And so mm-hmm. I've included a a guide for you on how to get hours back in your week by cutting your to-do list in half with just a one-minute exercise. 
see little tiny bits. That's all you need to get started on yeah. onto a better journey of feeling better about yourself and feeling better inside. You know, that's the most important thing in the world. Thank you so much, Ahuba, for being with us today. At the end of every podcast episode, I love to ask people this question because I find it very fascinating what it is that makes women do what they do and how they identify with the term kicking ass. So Ahuba, what does the term ladies kicking ass mean to you in your life? I actually think it means ladies being able to determine what kicking ass means for themselves, right? I think like that's the foundation of of my entire work is just recognizing that kicking ass is going to mean something different to every single person. And so to me, kicking ass really means when I'm living, you know, in line with my values and excelling at the things that are important to me, um, not the things that, you know, someone else down the block might think are important to them. Yes. And that is the most beautiful answer because that's why I love to do this because a compilation of all of the guests, there's never been an exact answer that has been given to that question that has duplicated somebody else because it truly does mean something different to everyone who, whatever it is that is important to you. And there'll be seasons where it means something different to people. And that is the whole point of that question is to get people to understand that it's going to change. There are different seasons. There are different times. There are different levels that you're searching for. Um, and you're okay, right? Where you're at, you know, if you show up today and you've only got 10% to give and you give 10%, that's giving a hundred percent today. So don't kick your, kick yourself in the butt for not being perfect all of the time because nobody is. And so get that illusion out of your head and uh, a your work is helping women work through that and understand that we don't have to be perfect to be really awesome. Yeah. Thank you.